Okay, so continuing this series looking at my recent Doctor Who B&M exclusive figure set haul, today I'm going to be turning my attention to the history of the Daleks number 8, which is of course based on the planet of the Daleks. But before I review this set, I wanted to point out that this isn't the only Dalek set we're getting this time around. We are also getting the History of the Dalek 6, which is based on the Evil of the Daleks. Now, I haven't personally bothered with this set since we seem to have had a whole glut of 60s Daleks in recent years. So for me, this was an easy pass. That said, I do think the interior inlay of this particular set is very nice. Obviously, we can see the Emperor Dalek in the background there, so I think that is a nice touch. But other than that, there was nothing in this set that was distinctive or original enough for me to really want this in my collection. Over the years, character options have produced hundreds of Daleks, and I feel like I've had an enormous amount of them. So for me, by this point, there has to be something unique or interesting or slightly different about them to warrant having yet another Dalek in my collection, because, as I said, I've got quite a few by this point. Also, I have to question character options release strategy strategy here because it feels like over the last two years uh, they've just released lots and lots and lots of 60s Daleks and I think if they were going to do the history of the Daleks they probably should have like shaken it up a little bit so that each set felt a little bit more interesting and diverse. Uh, certainly we did get of course Day of the Daleks set recently which was a nice refreshing change in terms of the colour scheme that we see in the Daleks and of course this time around we've also got the planet of the Daleks but I do think they would have been wise to have shaken this up and done a 60s release and then perhaps an 80s release and then cycle back to the 70s and cycled it around in this way just to make it feel like punters were getting a variety of different dogs as it is they're all much of a muchness and i suspect this kind of release strategy may hurt sales in the long run and i must admit i very nearly passed on the plans of the dalek set as well Having another pair of identical Daleks really wasn't lighting many fires for me, especially as the livery of this one is so close to the one we got in the Day of the Dalek set, it seemed like an easy pass. That was until I discovered there actually is an extra bonus, a unique feature to these Daleks, which kind of made it a must-buy for me. So without further ado, let's move on to the review. By now, if you've seen any of my other videos in this series, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. I love the window display, and that's what it's all about, really. But the actual branding, uh, obviously having the new Doctor Who logo, the image of the TARDIS there, and the sort of the blue and grey uh, colour scheme throughout, is a little bit bland, a little bit uninspired to me, so it's not the most displayable packaging in the world. That said, the window display is fantastic, and the reverse of the packaging is incredibly text-heavy, <laughs> giving us a lot of information about the Planets of the Dalek serial, and some information behind the scenes. I think this is a really nice touch. I like this. There's some actual interesting uh, factual trivia uh, tidbits that I didn't know before, so I think this is actually pretty cool. And I absolutely love the interior inlay. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's perfect for creating a little mini diorama, and I just love the artwork that's gone into this, faithfully recreating what we see on screen. So I think this is a really nice touch, and uh, top marks of character options for doing this, because it's so presentable and it's so nicely rendered. Now, as I said, both of these Daleks are identical, there's nothing unique or individual about them, so I'll just be taking a look at the one so you get a good sense of what they look like and what the feel is. And as usual, the dimensions and colouring of the livery is pretty much pitch perfect, and character options have done a really fantastic job of bringing this to life. The colour scheme is, of course, pretty much a monotone. There are really only two shades running throughout this figure. We have, of course, the lighter grey and then the darker black uh, running through it. And, of course, we have a little hint of blue and silver uh, on the eye stalk and on the guns there. Of course, this is pretty much screen accurate. This is what we see on screen, so I think they've done a really nice job of bringing this to life. It's not the most exciting or the most colourful Dalek that they've ever uh, produced, but nevertheless, it is faithful and, yeah, pretty nice to have in the collection. So what was it that attracted me to picking up this set then? Well, you may notice at the top of the dome here, there is a hinge. That means, of course, the lid does actually lift up. This is a new innovation. We've never seen this before in any previous release, and it's pretty cool because inside there is a sticker revealing the mutant within. I really like this image they've gone with. It's bright, it's colourful, it's pretty disgusting and yeah I think it brings to life that Carlet mutant that we uh, we all know and fear so I think they've done a really nice job of this. That said I do feel like they've missed a trick and I think they could have gone one step further to make this really really a fantastic release. If they'd hollowed out uh, this inner rim here and actually put in a plastic mutant which we know they've already produced in the past they could have just recolored it and put it inside there this would have made this an absolutely amazing release and I would have just been overwhelmed with it. Now the articulation for this Dalek is pretty much the standard Dalek scheme it has obviously the swivel at the dome, of course it has the hinge of the dome which is new, it's also got the hinge on the eye stalk and of course the ball joint for both the weapon and the plunger. 
He's also got the three wheels on the base there, the front one being of course a directional wheel so you can move them in different directions, and he rolls across flat surfaces pretty smoothly. Now for those who are interested, I thought it'd be interesting to compare how this Planet of the Daleks release compares against the Day of the Daleks release. As you can see, the colour scheme is pretty much identical, however, there are subtle differences to the dimensions. Planet of the Daleks seems to be a little bit taller, maybe that's to do with the hinge joint that we have in the, in the dome there, however, it does seem to be a little bit thinner and narrower as well. And of course, you'll probably notice that the gun arm as well as the ears or lights on top of the dome are slightly different shades as well. Overall then, for a set that I initially was going to pass on, I'm actually really pleased that I picked this set up. I really love this added innovation of lifting the dome up and having the Dalek reveal inside. I wish they'd gone one step further though, because it feels like the sticker is a little bit cheap. I feel like they could have gone an extra mile here and actually given us a mutant inside. That would have been truly uh, spectacular. But as it is, I'm still really pleased that they've gone this far, and maybe we'll get that in the future. As it is, this is a unique set, and it offers an opportunity to have something a little bit more interesting and diverse in our Dalek collections. So overall, for me, this is a four star release. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.